Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this edition, we're going to be looking at uh, an issue I've discovered with my new DaVinci 1.0A printer. And basically, the issue I have is instead of printing circles, it decides it likes to print ovals. So, uh, this is a little bit of a problem. Now, um, there's a good likelihood you're probably experiencing the same problem uh, as I did. And this is a relatively common problem, as I understand it, looking at the Internet. So I want to talk real bl briefly about when you see a problem like this, whether it's with the DaVinci or, or something else, and you're getting repeated um, issues like this. So one of the big things to think, keep in mind is that basically a 3D printer works on an X, Y, and Z axis. So, you know, basically it moves, you know, um, in an X axis and in a Y axis. You can think of it back to, you know, high school geometry in, in a Cartesian plane, then it also moves up and down. So when you get something like this, where you expect a circle and it's more like an egg, you can... Um, easily kind of surmise what's going on is that it's either uh, losing steps or it's out of alignment. And if it's repeatable, uh, like it is in, in, in my case with this and a couple of other round pieces I printed where I, I got the, the oval, it's very clear that it's an alignment issue because steps, you don't lose steps every time in the same amount. So I was getting a repeatable issue of these oval shapes um, in, in my uh, product and, and so very clearly an alignment issue. The other thing is is when I printed to one side of the bed, in other words this side, the problem was less than when I printed this side. So it kind of it was indicative of where my problem might be. So anyways, uh, with that being said, I kind of want to give some share that as some simple diagnostics. So, uh, you typically want to look in the direction of the problem. So we clearly know that, you know, since the part was printed like this and it's, it's oval, in other words, it's not as, as wide as it should be. Um, uh, sorry, this way. So it's not as wide as it is in, in the Y direction. It's probably a problem in, in, or alignment problem in the Y axis. And because... Uh, it's more prominent to one side of the bed than the other. It's probably on this side of the bed. So, anyways, uh, with, armed with that knowledge, what I decided to do is take a look inside the printer. So, uh, let's go ahead and take a look inside the printer. Let me turn the light back on. And sorry, I'm going to have to do some hand holding here to make all this work. So, one of the pieces that I, that I want, and hopefully this will focus is this piece right up here so th th because this this is your y and this is your x carriage whoops this is your x carriage and this is your y carriage so you'll notice that this the the bracket here is all the way up against this white uh cog that's a good thing because i've pulled this all the way forward now let's go back over here and let's look at this and hopefully you can see uh, up in here, and sorry for this, my fat finger, trying to get the camera. See, there's a gap. So that's why I'm getting this, this oval shape. Whoops, sorry about that, trying to get that, that to focus. See that gap up there? So this, this piece isn't as far forward as the corresponding piece on this side. And again, sorry for the um, camera movements. I'm, just holding it. So this is further forward than this. So this is why it's coming up with the egg shape. So that's a problem. So how do we fix that? So again, don't worry. It should be a relatively easy fix. Now I'm going to say it should be. So I'm going to put this back on the tripod, realign stuff, and we're going to fix it. So hang with me a second. And through the magic of video, I'll be right back. All right, as promised to the magic of video, I'm now back. So a couple things you're going to need to uh, fix this. So one thing you're going to need is a rather broad flathead screwdriver. And if it's a little bit more broad than this, that, that's good. Because what you're going to do is there are three tabs. Uh, let me tip the camera up a little bit so you can kind of see. 
there are three tabs that run across the uh, the top of this, and they are located. Well, actually, there's more than that on this one. There's one, two, three, four, five. So I told a little bit of fit. There's about five tabs. They're only small tabs uh, up here, and then so basically, I've already popped these. All you do is take with with the screwdriver, and this is why you need a broad. Uh, sort of a broad head on it is you just push forward and it pops off so as you see so this this will come forward and got to remember to unplug it take the cables out and then the side just slips off uh, so it actually comes off very easily so if you got to put a lot of force if you're putting a lot of force up here you're doing that incorrect now what we have is these screws right here hold that access that I showed in place. Now these these are torques so you'll need um, a set of torques and I think from what I saw on the internet that's a number 10 torque. Um, uh, looking, okay here we go. Just trying to find the right one. And um, yep here's to be as they said on the internet a number 10 torque. So now, what I'm going to suggest, and again, this is the first time I've done this, is that you simply loosen these. You do not remove these. And so I'm just going to loosen these up. And I'm kind of surprised that they're midway, uh, because a lot of the examples I saw on the internet had them uh, further back. So with that, I'm going to um, push this forward. Darn, I unplugged it. Piece comes out. So anyways, so I want to get the, the light on there. And then what I can do is I'm going to open up the top. Now, because I turned it back on, it slid it, slid the head to the back. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this forward again. And then I am going to push this forward. It's a little bit tough. Until I can pull that forward. And Pretty close. I still think I can go more. Yeah, I think I can definitely go more. Um, kind of a little bit hard to see with this. I'm actually going to also pop the other side. holds this top on because if this came off it would be easier. And I don't see what's holding this top on. Okay, let's take another look in here. Since, oh, I see what's holding this top on. Still trying to figure out what's holding this front on. I can't quite see. There we go. Yeah, a little bit anyway. Ah, there's a pin.
I'm just trying to take this top off. And be careful, there's a ribbon cable underneath it. Um, so I can e more easily get at the, um, the card. I'm not sure that did anything for me. Try not to put any tension on this ribbon cable. Um, uh, okay, let's give me a little bit more room. And again, you don't want to put too much tension because what you want to do is get it so it slips the teeth. And the piece is I've gotten it to slip in there. And I'm going to show you a little bit of um, what I've done. So let's take a quick look. See, if you can see up there, that's now gotten quite a bit closer but it's not quite touching because what I've done is I've pulled this rod forward see it loosen the belt and I slip this forward now take a look over here I can get it get it right and see this is this is just a little bit closer I'm like I'm like about a tooth off so uh, I'm gonna try adjusting that now for, for this top piece it's got four clips, um, two on the front, two on the top, and then two on the front and on this side. And it just pops off, as you can see. Be careful of the ribbon cable um, on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this again, and because uh, I need both hands to kind of reach in there. And let's see if I can get it adjusted a little bit more. Okay, so I did uh, a little bit of maneuvering. And basically what you, what you have to do is and I've got this this tightened back up because it's kind of like one of those things where it's kind of hard to manipulate the camera and do a bunch of things. So I'm going to kind of have to verbally walk you through. So again, as you were seeing in the last video, in, in the last segment uh, of this video, I had loosened up the torques. I had slid this forward, and then basically what you want to do is get this belt to skip ahead. Now, I got it to skip uh, all the way until about one or two teeth more. And that was a little bit difficult. And, and to be honest, I had to just push it a little bit more, um, basically all the way till till the bolt, the the nuts on the other side stopped it, and then um, kind of played with the belt a little bit to get the teeth to skip around, because that's what you really want to do is you want the the teeth to skip, skip on the gear without the gear turning, because if the gear just turns when you go to tighten it back up, it's just going to pull back and you're going to be right back where you were before. So now, as you can see, I am pretty much right tight up against there. I've retightened re my two torque screws on this side. And as you can see, I'm taunt, so it uh, should be problem solved. And because, again, this, this was actually quite a bit out of, out of adjustment. Uh, I also noticed, too, I've got uh, this po either popped out or was never stuck in. So I'm going to stick that back in while I'm thinking about it. So anyways, um, this should, uh, I, I report back if there's any problems, but this should fix my problem of, of uh, circles and, uh, uh, you know, printing. So it should also improve my print. So in general, I've been, I've been happy with it. I think it's just some normal adjustments you have to make. And again, you know, if you're going to buy a printer in, in this price class, I think you have to expect that you're going to, you know, have to make some adjustments to it and, and be at least a little bit handy um, uh, with things. So, um, again, as far as putting the side back on, you just, you just slant it in and pop it in. I don't think I'm going to spend the, the video time showing to put the side, the side back on because it just goes on how it came off. The same with the top. It just snaps on. So, uh, anyways, hopefully this, uh, video helped you out. So if you have ovals in your, in your prints like I did, whoops, get this in here so you can see it. If you had ovals in your prints like I did, this is the first place to take a look. Now, I've seen some other things with people doing some shimming and things like that. I don't, I don't think that's necessary. I don't see. I, I've looked through the carriage in this thing, 
I don't see really uh, any play that would warrant having to shim it. Um, I think maybe that was in earlier versions. Uh, also, you know, Chuck Hellebuck on his channel, you know, he had a broken bearing way in the back over there. I, that's one of the first things I look for. I don't see it. And it actually looks like this version compared to his 1.0 version has changed. There's also a spring tensioner back there on the motor. But I also, if, if it was broke, I should be able to get some movement. I, I get zero movement on any of these, so I think I'm all solid there. Um, uh, also, it seems like, I don't know if you can see, they ha seem to have different retaining rings on this than I saw in Chuck's video. So uh, I, I think, again, they beefed this up a little bit, fixing some of their problems from the, the earlier 1.0 version uh, into the, into the 1.0A. So anyways, whew, um, not too bad. Um, seems to be a relatively simple fix. And so, hey, if this helped you out, if this got you from printing ovals to circles like it should have, hey, please give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up really help us. Doesn't cost anything. Uh, gets, gets our videos promoted more. And when people are having a problem like this, it makes it easier for them to find them. So, again, you're just sort of paying it forward a little bit with the thumbs up. And so other people can, you know, solve their situations faster. Also, in the next video, I'm going to show how to grease this bearing right here because I have a lot of squeaking on the x-axis uh, because another common problem is the, the shaft in here because there's no bearing in this wheel. Um, tends to make noise because of a tight fit in the plastic, so I'll show you how to take that out and grease it in the next video. So stay tuned for that, and uh, we'll see you. Cheers.